Look, you know, there was nothing but nine million craters after a terrible sinking feeling. I obviously didn't recognize a thing after studying all these photographs. Nothing looked right. How you doing, Control? We look good. You're fine. Right, how about you, Telcom? Go. Guidance, you happy? Go. Fido. Go. Roger, you're a go. You go to continue power descent. You're a go to continue power descent. Roger. All during this power descent, I, I kept telling myself, Jim, this is not for real. You're back in the simulator. Just remember that. Eagle Houston, it's descent to the fuel to monitor over. Eagle Houston, everything's looking good here, over. Now, Houston, I'm getting a little fluctuation in the AC. Uh Voltage now. Roger. Stand by. Looking good to us. You're still looking good. Houston, you're looking at our delta H. Uh, that's affirmative. Looking good to us. Over. Eagle, Houston, we'll monitor that's your delta H. Beautiful. Six plus two five, throttle down. Six plus two five, throttle down. Roger, copy. Six plus two five. Let me try auto again now, see what happens. We got data dropout. Roger, stand by. We're going that alarm. It's, if it doesn't reoccur, we'll be go. We're going that alarm. Roger, understand. Go for landing. Roger, we got good data. 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 Roger, we got good Four forward, drift into the right a little. Coming down to 23. 21 down, 33 degrees. We're go, same tide, we're go. Picking up some dust. And a couple of big boulders. Coming right, got a good spot. Not too bad. There comes the shadow. Oh, are we coming in? Stand by for touchdown. Stand by. stop on the moon there was kind of a letdown saying you know we're gonna have to get it going fast again to get back home Neil this is Houston what's your status on hatch opening okay Houston I'm on the porch Neil this is Houston loud and clear radio check and verify TV circuit breaker in Roger, TV circuit breakers in. Houston, Roger, we copy and we're standing by for your TV. I'm going to pull it now. Houston, the Mesa came down, all right. And we're getting a picture on the TV. You had a good picture, huh? Hey, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. But the surface appears to be very, very fine grained as you get close to it. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. Yeah, I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, I had a bet with somebody who didn't uh, really felt that Neil spent a great deal of time before he went figuring out his famous words and they were not 
extemporaneous on the spot historical words he actually felt that these words might have even been written for Neil by somebody else and uh, I said well I'll bet you 500 bucks that when I get to the bottom of the ladder and nobody ever remembers what the second person to do something does anyhow and I'm gonna say it may have been a small step for Neil but it's a big step for a little fellow like me ready for me to come out okay I want to uh, back up and partially close the house Making sure not to lock it on my way out. So this person said, ah, no way you're going to do that. You're going to tell you what to say. I said, okay, bet's a bet. Well, I bet this person $500. So when I got to the bottom of the ladder, I said it. And that may have been a small one for Neil, but that's a long one for me. <laughs> well, Houston, we have you in blushing black and white. What happened to the color? Maybe the color wheel will come up. I can feel the, uh, the wheels running because I can feel something in motion inside. Why don't you go put your glove in front of the uh, lens? All right, we'll do. That's coming in there now, Al. Got the old camera running. Okay, what change did you make? I, I hit it on the top with my hammer. I figured we didn't have a thing to lose. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, I'll watch this. time my background carried me through but there were a lot of other qualified people that didn't go why my name came out I don't know sitting in the last row of the balcony, looking down for that play going on. While I was in the play, it was more like I was a spectator. Tranquility, this is Houston. Uh, we'd like to say from all of us down here in Houston, and really from all of us in all the countries and uh, in the entire world, we think that you've done a magnificent job up there today. Over. Thank you very much. Uh, have you had enough TV for today? Yes, indeed. It's been a mighty fine uh, presentation there. Thank you. Couldn't enjoy it as much as we did. Get some rest there and uh, have at it tomorrow. Okay, signing off. See you again tomorrow. All systems on the lunar module are in good order. We have not heard from Tranquility Base since saying good night. My mind's one that just goes constantly. So I took a sleeping pill. Slept like a baby. I had one dream that, that was very vivid. In my dream, we were driving a rover up to the north. And you didn't really feel like you were out there. It was untouched. The serenity of it had a pristine purity about it. We crossed a hill. I felt, gosh, I've been here before. And uh, there was a set of tracks out in front of us. And uh, 
So we asked Houston if we could follow the tracks, and they said yes. And we turned and followed the tracks. Within an hour or so, we found this vehicle. It looked just like the Rover, with two people in it. They looked like me and John. Had been there for thousands of years. Not a nightmare type situation, nothing like that. Probably one of the most real experiences in my life. I'd have traded it on a drop of a hat to go land on the moon. I'm one of these nuts. I like classical music. And uh, I almost learned to like country and western. One of the things I took was uh, earlier Symphony Fantastique, which seemed like uh, that was an appropriate thing to be taken to the moon. And I was floating along, just laying back and enjoying life. I had just crossed the face of the moon, going towards the, the darkness. And here's this strange scene, this music. And it just seemed to put it all together in one moment that you could completely forget that this is a real situation. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 104 hours, uh, 31 minutes uh, now into this historic mission. The lunar surface temperature in the sun should be around 135 degrees today. Uh, in the shade, the temperature would again be about uh, minus 100 to minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be in the shadow of the lunar module. Oh, look at that. Uh, it's a panoramic scene of beauty. Al, can you find the Earth? Oh, there it is. I see it. Looking at the Earth down there, uh, Houston, it looks like you're a little bit of a golf ball at arm's length now. Sure looks pretty, though. Really looks spectacular. It seemed very unreal to me to be there, looking back at the Earth and thinking how far, far away it was. This is the moon, that is the Earth. I'm really here. We're allowing about uh, five minutes for the drive to Station 3. Okay, safety belt front. And here we go. How's it driving, John? For easy? Driving good. And I'll tell you, Andy's never seen a driver like this. Barney Oldfield. Charlie, what should we be heading for? Those craters up there. Oh, don't tell me that. Boy, this is so neat. You look like you hit it just about for our spot. See Survey Ridge down there? Yeah. This is going to be spectacular. No, not through this crater. Yeah. Woo. Let me see if you're nervous, Charlie. Oh, Barney's really driving this beauty. Only way to fly, Tony. And, and boy, this is going to be such a spectacular view, you can't believe it. 